Hey guys, it's your girl Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. This has got to be my most requested first impressions ever on this channel. It is Nails Cat Cat, and as you can see, I have quite a pile of goodies here. I've got some gel tips, I've got some rubber based gels, I've got some gel polishes, I've got some gel paints. We got the works. And for those of you that have been asking me what the difference between rubber based gels and builder gels are, we're going to find out together today. So we'll take these products, we'll slap them on my nails, we're going to try to recreate one of her own beautiful looks. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around, we're getting into it. So as you can see, we have no small haul here, but I'm excited to try all these products out and I wanted to grab a little bit of everything because I know some of you guys are interested in the brand, but you're wondering what is it that's worth spending your coin on and what are some things that you can skip out on. So hopefully I will help you sort that out today. Really quick for those of you that may be new here, I am not a nail technician. I am a DIY dip and gel enthusiast. I love all things nail products. So even though I am not a licensed professional, I do have quite a few years of experience working with these types of nail products. So I do think I can offer you some insight whether you're a professional or a DIYer. And on that note, if you are a dip and gel lover as well, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and stick around. We do uploads on Tuesdays and Fridays, always dip or gel related. Before we dig into these new products, if you're wondering about the manis on my hands, I actually did not film either of these for my YouTube channel. I do have an Instagram reel for the one on the left, and then I have photos of both manis on my Instagram feed. So I will have my Instagram linked for you down below if you want to go check those out. But never fear, we will have plenty more Halloween and fall inspired manis coming up in the next few weeks. All right, we got a lot of products to cover here, so I'm gonna try to keep this as brief as possible, but because we're covering so much, no guarantees there, but I will have the time codes for you if you wanna skip ahead to certain sections if there are certain products that you are interested in. All right, we're gonna kick things off here with the gel tips. So I do have the medium coffin tips and I have the medium square tips, mostly because I couldn't decide which ones I wanted to get. I'm definitely more of a coffin fan, but all of her looks that really inspire me on her Instagram feed are with the medium square nails. So I kind of figured I might try out the medium square just since that's kind of her quintessential look, but I went ahead and grabbed both because I wasn't really sure what I was gonna use. So let me give you some impressions just on the packaging here. And let me also say that I do have some thoughts on my experiences with the shopping and shipping, but I'm going to get to that later in the video. Right now, I just want to focus on the products themselves. So as far as this packaging goes, instead of that typical soft plastic box that you're getting, this is a hard plastic box, which sounds like it would be a good thing, but I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I'm not a fan of this box. It's kind of difficult to open. And honestly, just because of like the hard plastic feel, it just... I don't know, it seems kind of rickety to me. And it's pretty, don't get me wrong, it's very pretty, but there's just something kind of abrasive about opening and closing it, I guess because of that hard plastic latch. I don't know, I'm just really not a fan of the box, but you know, I'm being very nitpicky, I know. Nobody really cares that much about the box anyway, but like I said, this is all about my first impressions, so definitely not the biggest fan of the box as far as the material and then also on the inside i noticed that a lot of tips will have like the numbers on the top and this one doesn't have it so i mean you can clearly see the numbers on the tips inside the box but you are missing that kind of numbering system across the top of the lid now as far as the tips themselves we are looking at the medium coffin here so we do have sizes 0 through 11 so we got 11 different sizes and i believe the box said it had 600 tips so you know, pretty decent size range here. We have something all the way from a size zero to a size 11. So that's maybe one more size than you often see. So that's pretty good. Now on this channel, we usually do some pretty in-depth comparisons, but I'm not going to go too far into that this time, just because again, we have so much to cover, but I did want to compare it to a recent brand because I feel like these are pretty spot on duplicates to those. So I'm going to start with that comparison. So these are the Vivid Glam Co Medium Coffin Tips on the left and the Nails Cat Cat on the right. And the reason why I'm not going to go too far into comparisons is because I think you got a pretty much exact dupe right here. These are pretty much spot on. So we have pretty much the same shape. We have the number placement at the tip in the same place. And we have practically the same length in the tips. I mean, if there's any difference, it's very microscopic. And then once you see from the tip, you can see we pretty much have the same level of thickness and curvature at the tip. 
And then the same thing at the cuticle, we have pretty much the same amount of thinness at the cuticle. So, you know, it doesn't really serve me much benefit or you much benefit for me to waste your time with a whole bunch of comparisons. If you want to see some more comparisons, you can just go look at my Vivid Glam video. I did show some other comparisons in that video, but this is pretty much spot on the same as the Vivid Tips as far as I can tell just as far as the way that they're made. And there's a reason why I'm bringing that up, but you're going to have to hold off for just a minute. I'll get to that in a moment. All right, as far as the medium square goes, it's pretty much the same situation. We have the same packaging, the same sizing here. Although I will say that the zero on the square appears to be a little bit bigger than the zero on the coffin, but that's kind of comparing apples to oranges there. So the closest comparison I have for the square is going to be the Painted Desert Medium Sculpted Square, which is really all I have. I don't have their natural square, but I think it's a pretty fair comparison. So on the left is the Painted Desert, and then on the right is the Nails Cat Cat, so pretty similar in appearance. Although the Sculpted is a bit more sculpted, for obvious reasons, and there is no like sculpted or natural designation on the Nails Cat Cat, but I feel like the Nails Cat Cat are a little bit more natural than the Painted Desert Sculpted, but again, I know that's probably not the fairest of comparisons. But now, as far as the cuticle area goes, we got a pretty similar uh, profile with the thinness, and then as far as the tips go, we have a pretty similar look as well here. We don't have much difference with the exception of the fact that the Painted Desert seems to be a little bit thicker at the tip than the Nails Cat Cat, but just a little bit. So as you can see, we have a pretty good amount of flexibility in these tips, which is typically a good thing, especially at the cuticle area. You can see it's quite thin and flexible, which definitely should make it easier as far as application goes to get a nice seamless finish. And there's a lot more structure at the tip, which is where you need it. So, you know, just by feeling it in my hands, it feels pretty good. Contrary to some DIYers belief, you actually don't want a nail that's super rigid and inflexible because think about your natural nails, they are a little bit flexible. So it's good to have a tip that kind of mimics that a little bit. These tips are not super sculpted. I would say they're a bit more on the natural side. So unless you have super sculpted nails, I don't think you're gonna have a trouble using these at all. All right, I'm gonna go remove these nails so that I can try out these new ones. So I'm gonna go pop these off. I'm not gonna be doing that on camera, but if you need to see a video about how I remove my gel tips without using any acetone and filling with a little bit of builder gel, I will have that one linked for you in the cards. Definitely worth looking into if you do not wanna soak your nails off. And now my not so favorite part, showing my little teeny tiny shorties on camera. You know, I never want to insult those of you that love shorties because I love the idea of shorties. I just hate the way they look on me, but that's just me. Some of you guys are rocking shorties and making them look awesome. So for you guys that are like that, I am jealous of you. But as far as it goes for me, I definitely feel very silly with these teeny tiny stubby nails. But hey, short nail bed life, what can you do? So just for reference, I always do keep one small layer of builder gel on my nails as a protectant, which allows me to file my nails off instead of soaking them off. So you will see a little bit of something on my nails and that's what that is, just a thin layer of builder gel to protect my natural nail. So the plan here is I'm basically gonna show me applying these tips and while I apply them and you're able to watch that, I will give you my first impressions on these tips and my thoughts. For my flash curing, I'm gonna be using my Painted Desert Sidewinder lamp. She does have a similar lamp on her site, but I did not purchase it. And then I will be applying these with my Vivid Glam Jelly Glue, which I've really fallen in love with. And she has her own jelly glue as well, but because I'm already happy with that one, I didn't really see the need to purchase that since I already had a big enough order as it was. So if you're looking to pick up any of that stuff, by the way, I have all the links down in the description box. So let me tell you about my thoughts on these tips. I really do like them, I, I do. I think they're really good quality tips. Didn't really have any issues applying them other than the fact that I somehow just struggle with square tips a little bit. I feel like if you don't get them perfectly straight, like they're the hardest to hide, like one being crooked, if you know what I mean. Like some shapes just kind of like really highlight if they're even the slightest bit off. So I did actually have one that I had to clip off and reapply, but that was, you know, just operator error. That had nothing to do with the tips themselves. But the quality is definitely there. That's, that's not the issue I have. The issue I have is that I feel like they're a little overpriced and that you can find some similar options that are a little bit less expensive. So let me put it in perspective for you. A box of these tips is $24.99, which I think is a totally fair price. 
The issue that I have is that once you tack on the shipping price, it really drives up the cost. So of course her shipping, she did start with a newer uh, shipping service. So I don't know if that's contributing to the price hike in the shipping or if there are other factors at work. And let me just say that I do not own a small business. So I'm sure there are so many expenses involved and you know, that obviously you have to, your expenses have to be reflected in what you're charging the customer. So I'm not faulting her at all for that. So her shipping prices are based on distance. To my understanding, she's based out of Miami, Florida, and I am in Texas, South Texas, and the shipping rate for me to buy a single box of tips is $12. Now you guys can tell me what you think, but I feel like that's pretty high for a box of tips. And I actually ended up ordering another rubber base gel, which I'll get into later, but even just ordering that and one more polish also cost me $12. So you know, when you factor in the cost of the shipping on top of that, now we're talking, you know, $36, thir almost $37 for a single box of tips. Now in comparison, the Vivid Glam that I was comparing the coffins to that are pretty much dupes, those are also $25, but you can use my discount code to get 10% off, which knocks them down to $22.50. And she offers flat rate shipping, which I believe is $5. So now we're talking a difference of $10 in price for a box of tips. So do you kind of see where I'm going with this? It, it doesn't seem like the pricing is unfair, but once you tack on the shipping, it just seems a little high to me for a single box of tips. That said, she does have a lot of options that you will not find at other retailers. She has quite a few extra small and extra, extra small options. I can throw some photos of those up on the screen, which I do think are definitely work, worth looking into because I know some of you guys were really looking for some really short nail options. So she might be the only place you're going to find those right now. So if you're looking for extra, extra short or extra short options, I would definitely recommend the tips. It's not, I'm not that I'm not recommending them, but I think for your standard medium size to longer sizing, I think you're going to find less expensive and just as good options elsewhere, just to be completely frank. That said, the quality of the tips is there. I really enjoyed these. I don't think there's any issues with these. I like the way they look, so I'm not unhappy with them. It's just as far as the price goes, once you factor in the shipping, it just feels a little bit high to me. All right, so either way, we got our tips applied. We are ready to put something on these babies. So we're gonna take a look now at the rubber base gels. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight into the actual product. And then while I apply it, I will kind of talk to you about how this is similar and how this is different to Builder Gel because they are definitely not the same product. So first let me tell you that this packaging gets a 12 out of 10 for me. I think it is absolutely gorgeous and so sturdy and just so professional and clean looking. I really, really like it. So this is the same packaging for both the rubber base coat and also for the gel polishes. So I have four different colors here because I wanted to get a little bit of variety, but I'm going to tell you up front, some of these colors are definitely more suited to my skin tone and some are not. So I think that's actually a good thing because again, I'm hoping this will help you guys if you're looking to pick one up to find a shade that's good for you. So here's an up close look at the packaging and I got to tell you, I know these aren't super cheap, but I feel like they're pretty on par with a lot of other premium gels as far as pricing goes. And I just feel like this you know, packaging really upgrades it for me. So inside this box, you're gonna get a kind of a rectangular shaped bottle. And let me tell you, this bottle is super weighty, super heavy. This just really feels a luxe. And you know, that kind of stuff that may not be important to you, but to me, it just really adds to the experience of the product. So I love that about it. As you can see, we have a swatch dot that matches the color that is inside. So I'm just giving you a quick peek at the actual consistency, which I will explain a little bit further as we get into the actual application. But as you can see, this is a base gel that is not your typical base gel. It's not super thin and runny, and it's also not a builder gel consistency either. It's not super duper thick either. So this is kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, but again, I'll get into more of an explanation as to the actual consistency once we get into the application. So here are the four colors I got. After I swatched these, I did go back for one more color just because, you know, like I said, I'm eternally on the quest for my perfect nude, though I do have a couple in here that I think are going to be really ideal for me. So I have Ballet, Bare Minimum, Barely There, and Frenchie, and I will show you some swatches so we can look a little bit more at that. So the way I applied them on the swatch sticks is the way I apply them on my nails. So you'll have to see the application to see what I mean there. But basically I have a thin coat followed by a thicker coat. So from left to right on the left, I have ballet and then I have bare minimum and then I have barely there and then Frenchie is on the far right. 
for reference, I'm usually the third or fourth lightest foundation shade, sometimes the second, depending on the shade range. I'm pretty pale, guys, pretty pale. I would say I am neutral, but I do have a slight cool undertone. So if you can see why not hold ballet up to me, this looks like a pretty good uh, color for me to do any kind of French work. It's a little bit on the lighter side, but not so light that it's going to completely wash me out. So this will be definitely a go-to for me. Next up is Bare Minimum, and this is the one I'm actually going to use for the Manny today. And again, you can see this is definitely on the lighter side, though it is a bit more beige to me. Ballet is a bit more peachy pink, and this one's a bit more beige. But both are definitely colors that I can use for any type of French nail or any type of abstract design. Next up is Barely There, and this one is getting to the point to where I almost can't use it. Now, if I thin this coat out a little bit more, I do still think I can use it. It's definitely more on the neutral, slightly leaning cool tone, but I do think that folks with darker skin than I have will probably enjoy this a little bit more than me. I can use it. I'm just going to have to use a really light hand. Taking a look at Frenchie, honestly, I don't think this is going to be my best shade. I think this is a fabulous color for folks with warmer skin tones, especially anybody medium to deep. I think you're going to look fabulous in this color. Just on my ghostly pale skin and with a warm undertone, I don't think it's the right fit for me. But again, I'm hoping that you guys will see this and maybe be able to judge based on her skin tone, which is a little bit deeper than mine and my pale skin tone, which one might be right for you. This is just a very tiny sampling of what she has available. I've got to say she has a really nice range of nudes for folks who are looking for something for French work or for abstract designs and they want like a natural nail look underneath. I love that. I'd like to see even more, but I have to say as far as what I've seen from other companies, I think she has a really nice variety of light to deep and then cool to warm. So I feel like there's definitely a nude in her collection for everybody. All right, so like I said, for today's video, I'm going to be using Bare Minimum, and as I apply this, I'm going to give you my impressions on the product and some things that I think this would be very useful for. Let me just say up front, this is my very first time using rubber base. I have never used rubber base before this point. So the way I'm applying it is the way I saw her apply it on one of the tutorials on her Instagram feed. So she recommends putting a thin layer like a traditional base coat and followed by a thicker layer for your second coat. So that's what I'm going to do. As somebody who's never done it before, that sounds like a pretty good method to me. But even though I have never used it before, I do my research, guys. That's me. I'm very much a Google until I learn everything there possibly is to know about something and definitely leaning towards the professional opinion on this. So here's what I can tell you about rubber base. If gel base and builder gel had a baby, this is, would be the baby. <laughs> it's somewhere between the two. So this is not super thin and runny like a gel base coat, but it's also not super thick either like a builder gel. So this is in the middle. And I think that makes it a really great product for a couple of reasons. So a true rubber base gel is actually like a gel base coat. So you don't need to use a gel ba base coat with this. This is the gel base coat. This is just think of this as like an upgraded version of a gel base coat. So you'll notice I didn't use one. I went right in with the product over my gel tip. What I think makes this product exciting is how versatile it is. So you can use this as a gel polish if you want. You can use this as a natural nail overlay. Or you can use this over top of tips like I'm using if you need to add a little bit of strength to the tip. There's just so many possibilities here. And because it's thinner than builder gel, it's supremely easy to work with. It actually has the beautiful self-leveling of a good gel base coat, but it has the a little bit more structure similar to a builder gel. So like I said, to me, it's really the best of both worlds. So let's say you're somebody who likes to put product on your natural nail, but you want something as a protective layer and you find builder gel just too difficult to work with. I think you would absolutely love this because you're still going to get a little bit of strength from it. It is still a little bit flexible, but again, flexibility is not a bad thing because you want the product to flex with your nail. You want it to strengthen your weaker nails, but you don't want it to be so inflexible that it kind of cracks or chips like I've had happen before with hard builder gels. I'm going to interrupt that thought for just a moment because I'm going to put on the second layer here and I will tell you she has a gorgeous tutorial on her Instagram as to how she does this and I do not have these skills at all to do it like she does it. So I'm doing it the more I would uh, in the matter of a builder gel, meaning I'm kind of just plopping the product down on there and then kind of smoothing it out a little bit and walking it into certain places and cleaning up these sides and the cuticle with a finer brush. 
But anyway, yeah, if you're looking for just like a little bit of added strength to your natural nail because you want to put product over top of it and you want that protective layer, I think this would be absolutely perfect for that. You guys know me, I've really gotten into tips and probably won't be going back to my natural nails super soon. But when I do, I definitely think I would use this instead of Builder Gel. I find this much easier to use and I feel like it's just the right amount of strength and flexibility in one. And you can also do fills with these. And if you need to see a tutorial on that, she actually has one on her Instagram feed. So obviously I won't be using this as a natural nail overlay, but I will still definitely get tons of use out of these. I love me a French, not necessarily traditional French, but like design French. I think that is so fun. So I can definitely see myself continuing to use these. In fact, I'm positive I'll be still using these. You'll probably see these quite a bit. Anytime I want that kind of like naked nail look or I want to do a French design, you'll definitely be seeing this again. I don't know that I would use this to fill my tips, it's a curious thought, but I'm afraid it's not quite structured enough to do that. With a tip, I can see filling it on natural nails. I don't know about a tip. I might try it at some point, but I don't know, just feeling the texture of this, I'm not sure that that would work super well, but it's something to think about. Let me know if you guys have tried rubber base and if you tried doing a tips fill with it, that would definitely help us out. You definitely cannot build an extension with this. This does not have the structure or strength that Builder Gel does or Poly Gel or acrylic. You cannot build an extension with this, but you could use this as an added strengthener over top of pre-existing um, extensions that you built. So let's say you built some extensions with Builder Gel and you want a little bit of added strength. You could definitely put this over top of that, but this on its own, you cannot build an extension with this. I found this to be super beginner friendly to use and I would also say that I love the fact that it is somewhat opaque but still sheer but not so sheer that you can like see right through it which is definitely one of those complicated things with tips like this. You want there to be some sheerness but you definitely don't want to be able to see like that cut off between your natural nail and the plastic tip on the background so this really kind of disguises that. All right, I think you're starting to get the idea here as far as the application goes, but yes, definitely very easy to use and definitely beginner friendly. So let me go ahead and skip ahead to the finished nails. So as far as cleaning up the shape here a little bit, I did want to sharpen up the square again and then kind of clean up the side walls just a little bit. Even though I was pretty careful with my application, I'm a perfectionist. Everybody knows this on this channel by now, but you can gently run your file along the side walls and the edge. I would not go hard on this like say a builder gel, but you definitely can clean this up a little bit if you have some areas that got a little bit out of control and then just kind of wipe the edge with an alcohol wipe to get that excess dust off and try not to wipe it too much because you want to kind of leave the tack on there. But um, but yeah, you can definitely clean it up a little bit if you want to. So this is what we're left with after that thin layer with the slightly thicker layer over top. So I think it looks pretty good. You can obviously continue to build if you need to, though you don't want to get them too thick. I think really like that thin layer and the one thick layer is pretty ideal. So now we're going to go in and try some of these polishes over top. So the gel polishes do still come in this same gorgeous packaging, which again, I do not find these gels to be super overpriced. They're, they are a premium price, don't get me wrong, but I feel like the quality stands up to what she's asking for it. So I could have gotten more, but I only got four colors and actually a few of the colors I wanted were sold out. She's still like having a hard time keeping things in stock because there's just so much demand. But I got these colors with the idea of recreating one of her manis, which is what we're about to do. So I got some purples and some blues and I asked you guys in my last video which one you wanted to see and it was 50-50. <laughs> have you guys wanted the purple? Have you guys one of the blues I'm like great thanks y'all are no help I'm just kidding but I did end up going with the blues but let me show you all the swatches so you get to see the texture of the gel during application but these are the four colors I got so from left to right I have I Lie Like You, Berry Breeze, Prince Charming, and Mal de Ojo the texture and pigmentation on these gels is crazy good they are absolutely gorgeous the i would say the two pastel shades you probably want a second coat but you could almost get away with a single coat of those and for pastels that's pretty hard to do and definitely the darker two absolutely one coat coverage it's amazing this formula is just gorgeous so for the Manny, I'm going to be using Prince Charming and Mal de Ojo, which she actually used on hers that I'm going to replicate, and I'll put up a picture of it. She used Prince Charming and um, Blue Raspberry, but that one was sold out, so I had to sub it with Mal de Ojo, and I am so glad I got that one because I am obsessed with this blue. 
So you can see the texture of this gel is a bit on the thicker side, but it's not super thick and gloopy. It's like just right to me. So I'm putting a little bit here on the palette because I'm not going to be doing a full cover now. I'm going to be doing some French and abstract work. So I'm going to try to breeze through this because I'm looking at the counter on this video and it's already too long. So I'm so sorry, but I just don't want to skip past anything because I want you to have all the info if you're considering making a purchase from her brand. But I'm sure you can see just from this first application here, this abstract work, I mean, you can use gel polishes for abstract designs like this, but sometimes it takes a bit of building up and sometimes even after a layer, you don't have enough pigmentation, you have to go back for a second, which can kind of make your nails uneven, but that is not the case here. This is so good. It's almost like, to me, it's almost like gel paint in a bottle. It's just that pigmented. Now it is a little bit thinner like gel polish, but it's still just, I, I can't get over the pigment level on this. It's crazy good. So I know this is kind of unfair because I'm not really doing a full cover nail. I'm just doing abstract and French work. But like I said, I wanted to really recreate one of her designs that really inspired me. But at some point, I will definitely revisit these and do a full cover nail. But I'm sure you can see just from this how pigmented, how gorgeous, how easy it is to use. It's super self-leveling. I'm just really, really impressed with these gels. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this work with Malojo and then we'll do the accents in Prince Charming and then we'll finish up here in just a bit with the white gel paint. I think these look stunning already but we are going to finish up here with a little bit of traditional French so for this I'm going to be using one of her gel paints so she actually says she prefers to do her French work with white gel paint instead of white gel polish though she does have both available but let me just open these up because the packaging again she just got me with the packaging is so cute so I have gold which is a glitter gold and then I have a metallic gold and then I have the white so the texture of these are all pretty similar. They're definitely a gel paint consistency, which is going to be thicker and more pigmented than a gel polish. But honestly, the pigmentation is pretty close to the gel polish because that gel polish is just so pigmented. But in general, that is the difference between a gel polish and a gel paint. So this is designed to be just a little bit thicker and more pigmented and perfect for our work. So I got both, which I know seems redundant, but I like to have sometimes a metallic finish and sometimes I want a glittery finish. So I needed both, okay? I needed both. So on the thumb and the pinky, I'll be creating the traditional French with the white gel paint, but I'm going to be doing more of like a modern French. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have never liked French tips, not even when I was young and they were super popular. I just never liked the look of them. But this modern French, I don't know what it is, but I'm obsessed with it. I feel like that's kind of dumb because just changing the shape a little bit shouldn't make me enjoy it that much more, but I really do. I could honestly like wear nothing but modern French forever, every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> that's how much I like it. I just think it's super classy, but I just think it's less kind of blocky looking and more elegant looking with this modern shape to it. So that's what I'm going to do on the thumb and the pinky. And again, you can see how pigmented this gel paint is and so easy to work with it does take a little bit longer to self level than the polish but not you're not sitting around waiting forever it just takes a little bit longer but it does self level beautifully so you're not left with like streaky marks so if you're looking for a super easy way to do a French I don't think it's going to get any easier than this get a rubber base from her get the white gel paint Boom, you got some super easy French nails. And honestly, like, I don't like dip powder French. I think it's way too complicated. But gel French, especially with these products, so, so easy. I promise you, you can do it. I mean, look, look how perfect that came out. And y'all, I don't have a tenth of the talent she does. So I'm super impressed with this white gel paint and how easy I made a French out of it. So while I finish up the pinky with this same look, I'm going to wrap up my first impressions. 
I can't say that I have tried a bad product today. Everything I've tried has been great or better than great. The tips are the only ones that I just think for me, I probably won't go back for. But again, it's not a quality issue. It's just that I think I can get the same quality for a cheaper price. But again, if you are somebody who is dying for extra short or extra, extra short tips, you know, those really, really short tips because you have small nail beds, I really do think you're going to enjoy these tips. So I wouldn't discourage you from that since if those, that's the only place you can find the length and shape you're wanting, I think you'll be happy with these tips. As far as the gel products go, oh my gosh, totally blown away. The gel polish, incredible. The gel paint, incredible. They're rubber base, super easy to use. I will absolutely be using all these products again. And like I said, I think you're gonna see a lot more of the rubber base, especially for when I want to do French designs. Even if I'm using dip powder, I can still see me using this just on that nail just to make it really easy on myself. Bottom line, if you see anything on this video or on her page that you're interested in, I absolutely think you'd love it. I can't recommend these products enough. So here are all the designs finished. And I gotta tell you, I, like I said, I don't have the 10th of the talent that she does, but I feel like these came out pretty good. I'm really proud of these. And I know it's not an exact dupe, but I think it's pretty close to what she did. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I don't have her top coat, so I'm gonna jump off camera real quick and top coat this with another brand and I'll be right back. Here are the finished nails. And I have to tell you guys, I am absolutely crazy about this Manny, crazy. This is one of those Mannies that I could just wear and wear and wear it with different color combos and never get tired. And if you like that look too, let me tell you, that's all she's got on her Instagram feed. So you gotta go follow her for nothing else than the amazing inspo. All right, so I'm finishing up here with my cuticle oil. This is Scales of Mermaid Spicy Reads, which is one of her newest releases, and I just can't get enough of it. It's such a nice woodsy with berry undertone scent, and it's it just has that sexy feel to it. I just really like it. So here is the final look, and I gotta tell you, I'm kind of annoyed because I think these are so beautiful in person, and I just feel like the video and the photos are just not doing it justice. So you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. But I absolutely love, love, love how this turned out. And I love everything that I tried today. And I'm super excited because like I said, I know these prices aren't cheap, but if you're getting good quality and you're willing to spend the coin on something that you think you're gonna use a lot, then it's worth it. And I gotta tell you, I'm not disappointed in anything I got. So I'm super happy that I spent a lot of money, but love everything I got. Y'all, she got super chatty today, super chatty. And I'm sorry about that, but again, I didn't want to leave anything out in case you were considering spending some of your money on this. I wanted you to see what was going to be worth it for you because the last thing I want you guys to do is to spend your money on something that you don't absolutely love. And so I hope this helps give you an idea of what might be worth it for you to purchase from Nails Cat Cat. So that is going to complete this video. So I hope you did enjoy it and find it helpful. If you did, it would help me out so much if you would give me a thumbs up down below. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed already, I hope you will consider subscribing before you go. And don't forget that notification bell. We got new content coming every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. Central. As always, guys, I thank you so much for taking time here today to listen to me excessively ramble about my excitement for nail products. <laughs> I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.